All right, welcome to this video here. We're gonna try to make this one uh, just a quick to the point, get into some analysis. And uh, what I wanted to show you is just a way, um, kind of a, uh, I guess a clever, maybe obvious way of identifying shellcode entry point in some situations. And uh, what we'll use then in order to do that is our target document with some shellcode will be this fella right here from the Malware Bazaar, recently, relatively recently uploaded. Um, this is the, uh, an, it'll actually be an RTF document and it's exploiting CVE 2017-11882, an oldie, but a goodie. Um, so I suspected that there'll be some shellcode in there. Of course, uh, part of the exploitation process often involves shellcode. Uh, so that'll be our sample document. We're gonna use a couple of tools here and uh, and then um, get the shellcode, take a look at the shellcode. So I already got that document downloaded and we can confirm that it is an RTF by just simply looking at the content of this file with HXD. Uh, you'll see here, beginning of the file, um, left paren backslash RT. That's all that's needed for a valid RTF document. Um, although you might more commonly see that it's RTF, that's not actually not actually required. Um, and so now we can use some utilities here in order to help us with uh, the analysis. And one of those utilities is gonna be RTF obj. This is one of the many utilities provided by Didier Stevens. And you'll see that uh, there is an OLE object in this document, um, although it's complaining about it not being well formed. So there's something a bit odd and off with it. Of course, if it's being utilized for exploitation, that's probably not a big surprise. Um, what we can do, okay, next thing we can do now is we can actually dump that content and all we need to define here is uh, dash s and the stream it was only one so zero offset and uh, this will save that raw data into object this file right here okay uh, if we go to the desktop there's that file let's open this up with hxd no not hash my file with hxd and uh, here we can see uh, what looks like it's related to equation editor um, which is, that is what CVE 2017-11882, if that is accurately tagging it anyway, um, that is involved in, that one is involved in, in the equation editor. And there's, I think there's a couple more out there. Um, so yeah, okay, makes sense. Uh, I would suspect then that there's some shellcode in here. And and um, I guess there's a number of ways in which we could go about this. Um, I usually try to have the, the path of least resistance. And something that I came across recently was, well, shellcode has to establish position independence, which means that likely you will see a call instruction with a relative offset, not a full virtual address. Um, so an instruction such as this, E8 is the, um, the opcode for call, and then this would be the four bytes for the operand. Um, well, there's just 36 in hex. So that would just be a, a relative jump or a relative call. So this could very well be uh, the entry point. Um, we could search for you know, a number of null bytes. And uh, if we do that with this file, because maybe it wasn't so conveniently located here right to or at the beginning of this, this blob of data, uh, maybe we search for a couple of null bytes and we'll search all in the file. Uh, yeah, okay, you see, you can get you can get quite a few results here, um, but you can still sift through them relatively quickly and go, okay, I'm looking for an E8 something, you know, null byte, null byte. And you'll notice that, that really none of the results here fit that situation. Uh, of course, you might be thinking, well, why not just use a regular expression or something? And yeah, sure, we could, you could absolutely do that. Um, but in this case, uh, it was rather straightforward here. Uh, so... That, that would mean that we have a potential entry point here or where the shell code um, will begin execution or very, very close to it at an offset of D and five. Okay, so what we can do now is we can use a shell code launcher. There's our input blob. At least we know our it contains our, um, our shell code, or what we suspect to be shell code. Uh, the dash PE, sorry that wrapped, but dash PE will then tell shellcode launcher to take that input file and wrap it in a PE, the entry point, so we can define the entry point now because with the PE file, that'll become the address of entry. So when we hand it off to Ida, Ida knows where to begin disassembly. And uh, then we will define the output file name. I'll just call that sc.bin. We'll run this command. You should see done building PE file created with the name that you chose. And now if we go to the desktop, sc.bin, um, 
where's my IDA icon? It's not in the quick launch anymore, so we'll just do this manually and uh, go ahead and there we go. It was in my history. Uh, we'll run through and launch this. Okay, uh, this is a pretty good sign here, in my opinion, right? We have this call, and if we follow the call, I, I would suspect, you know, like if you took a look and dump strings, and, and I, you know, Ida has just never been all that great with its ability to generate strings, but, you know, a quick glance shows that Ida doesn't spit out any. Uh, so it would make sense to me that, that you know, this is not only establishing position independence, um, that is, like, here's the call instruction, and Ida creates the operand and gives you the actual address now that it's it's disassembled it and you see that that's this location and so not only do we have that call but now we have a pop so a call pop you know pop is going to take the address that was on top of the stack after the call instruction and so now it knows where it's located in memory um, all of this to me just feels like it's going to deobfuscate the rest of the shell code and this is further confirmed by going down to this block right here Right, we get to this basic block and then it loops back around. Otherwise, we come down here and we jump to this, and this looks like nonsense. Like, so this to me is a really good indication um, that there is that this is right now in an obfuscated state. And uh, and that's just because we have all of these instructions that just don't make sense in this order. And many of these that I I've never actually seen ice BP. Um, you know, so that's a pretty good indication. So now that we have this already in a PE file, we can set a breakpoint here to test this theory. Um, we can just run using the free debugger in Ida, and uh, we've actually hit our jump, and you'll see this is all changed now. So if we step a little bit here, yeah, Ida's going to say, whoa, things are looking kind of strange. Uh, you'll see we're, we're still we're still now on a path where uh, we went from having obfuscated to deobfuscated codes. I'd certainly say we found the entry point, and uh, furthermore, you can see these strings. And so, you know knowing that strings oftentimes are going to be uh, kind of grouped together. Here we have URL mon, URL download to file, W, and now we have HTTPS string, right? And it's, you can see this is a wide character string. So what we can do is we can just go to the end of this string. Oh, I wanted to highlight all that. Okay, I'll try it again. There we go. And export data. Well, we can just simply copy that. We'll go to CyberChef. And let's see, does it have a magic? Yeah, let's just click the magic from base 80. Oh, no, <laughs> that's not what we want. We want from hex. And then uh, just to make that a little bit easier on our eyes, uh, we will uh, decode Sorry, it was just drawn a little bit of a blank there, and that is UTF-16, little Indian, and there we go. So that's likely the, uh, the actual URL that it's trying to download from, and uh, we saw, maybe you saw, but as we were scrolling through this content, there was a path location up here a little bit earlier on, uh, plugfix.exe and the user's app data folder, right? So uh, that might make it a little bit easier now to extract because we were able to you know, get the shellcode out of that, that document, that RTF doc, um, get past that first layer of obfuscation to get uh, to the important strings here. Uh, of course, you can run it uh, and see what happens if you wanted to, and uh, you know your analysis can kind of take off. Um, the, what kind of drew me to this is because you know I was a little curious to see how often these old exploits are still out there in circulation, um, and then part of that I was also curious, you know, how easy is it to set up an environment. Uh, to still have a vulnerable version of Office that this exploit would work on. Turns out I don't have anything that it'll work on. Um, so I guess if I was interested in beyond that, getting the actual shell code out, well, you know, here is a way to do that. Uh, but, you know, if you wanted to look at some of these old, these old exploits, it can actually be a little bit of work to get the environment and some of the old software uh, copies of it to actually work. And, uh, and then I'd be able to investigate those bugs. So anyways, um, that's it for the video. Hope you enjoyed that uh, quick take on analysis and some techniques for identifying entry point and shell code when you're not really sure where the entry point should be located. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have any uh, comments or other ideas, please leave those below. I'd love to hear from you. Otherwise, talk to you all in the next video.